Hello everyone and welcome to Pretty and Practical, a brand new series where I teach you how to build something that looks nice and also serves a functional purpose in the game of Minecraft. We're going to be building this little chicken coop behind me today, which is also a fully automatic functional egg farm. So if we take a look at this build, it's a pretty rustic looking build. Maybe you could put it in a medieval type build or a new, uh, like a farmhouse type rustic scenario, which is very common in Minecraft. If we take a look underneath the build here, this is the practical part of it and the only smart part of it. Uh, this hopper minecart goes around collecting all of the eggs and then automatically deposits them into this chest here. Now this looks like a large area to be covered, but it does cover the entire area above and you can see the minecart goes quite slowly over these two eggs on its or on the, over these two hoppers on its way in and deposits all of the eggs here. And just as I was building all of this, this has been running with a few chickens in there, so you can see it does work. So to get started on this build, you can see that you can either build it above ground and terraform up like I've done here, or if you'd like, you can just go a few blocks down below the ground and have that at ground level. I only did that there to show you for demonstration purposes, but the size that you're going to need for this whole build is 11 wide, 7 deep, and 8 tall. And what I mean by deep is this space here to here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3 four, five, six, seven, eight, and then this from there to there is 11 blocks. So you're gonna wanna start with digging a hole that is nine blocks wide, five blocks deep, and four blocks down. So by deep, again, we mean this way, and then four blocks down, one, two, three, four. That brings us to the bottom of this demonstration world. Once you have your hole dug just like this, you're going to want to place three redstone torches in these positions here. So looking at your hole from where you started, place one in the back left corner, the front right corner, and then one dead center here. And if you want just to be double safe, one, two, three, four, and then the fifth one and you place your torch. And from this side, one, two, and on the third one, you place your torch. That'll put it dead center of this hole. And you can see they make a nice diagonal line once they're done. So once you have your hole dug and your torch is placed, you're going to want to get in that hole and start filling that in with blocks just above the torch like so. Once your blocks are placed, we can start with our rails, but you're actually going to want to leave these two blocks right here out. This is where our chest is going to go. So skip one from the back right corner, pop those two out. You can put some blocks underneath if you like, and reserve that spot for a chest. Then we're going to move over to our corner here, where our redstone torch will be right underneath this block. You're going to want to start with the powered rail and another powered rail. And you'll know that you've hit the right spot and your torch is in the right place because those will light up. Then we're gonna start placing our regular rails. Now, right when you get to this spot, it's almost certainly going to do that. That's nothing to do with you. That's just how powered rails work sometimes. Just break that rail and move right along and replace that powered rail afterwards. Then we continue on just like so until we reach this point here. These three middle blocks, are going to have powered rails on top of them. Again, you'll know you're in the right spot because they'll all three will light up because of the redstone torch underneath that block right there. Then we just want to continue on here, filling in these regular rails in this snaking S pattern until we get to this corner here where we're going to need to put a chest. So right here, place down two chests to make a double. Go here, crouch, place two hoppers right on that chest, and then continue placing your rails. You're also going to need to crouch here and here, otherwise you'll open the inventory of the hoppers, and for these final two, place another two powered rails. Once all your rails are in place, you can go ahead and pop down a hopper minecart in one of the corner spots, and it should automatically start pushing that way. Now this should, in theory, run forever, but it's Minecraft, and sometimes things happen where it will stop randomly, so there are occasions where you might notice your egg collection has stopped or slowed down. Just take a peek down there and see if it's not moving. You may need to get in there and give it a little bit of a nudge to get it going again. Next step in our design is to orient your build. To do that, we're going to be placing a cornerstone for our build. Our cornerstone is going to be this diorite wall right here. So what you're going to want to do is right above this 
block here with our first corner rail on it you're going to want to place a grass block and on top of that grass block place your diorite wall that is how we're, we are going to make sure that the rest of our build is all safely above this collection system now we can actually start building our structure. We're going to lay out our building by placing our brick blocks first. So from our cornerstone here, this diorite wall, place one, two, three brick blocks, diorite wall, and then come down here, brick block, space, this is where the chickens will come in out, brick, 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 brick 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 very simple straightforward design it's a five by five structure with these two back walls being diorite also make sure to leave a space here for our door that will eventually go in and then plop down two stone brick walls right there once those are in place you can come to your back right diorite wall skip one two three blocks place another diorite wall one two three place a diorite wall one two three should be the space remaining in between your bricks and your last diorite now that the diorite and the bricks are in place, you can actually just build up the rest of your walls right away. So we're going to start with our spruce logs. These are stripped spruce logs. So on these first two, you're going to build up two and then only one on the back ones. And we're just placing the spruce logs on the brick walls for now. These diorite walls will stay without any logs on them. When you get to this side of the build, place one spruce log facing up that way. And then this one I faced placing that log right there. I wanted the texture going horizontally rather than vertically. So we'll just continue on with that with these two, making these two walls too high. And then come to your front of the build and connect these three blocks horizontally. Place two glass blocks right there. Come over here and build your diorite walls up three high. And then come into these spaces and fill them in with glass panes. Once that's done, just go ahead and plop in a few dark oak fence posts right here and here, and we'll move on to the final step of the build. Our final steps here are going to be building a roof and the interior of this build. Now, you can place a door. I like the jungle door here. I find it actually has a nice rustic look, and it goes well with the brick and spruce palette. Uh, but you can use whatever door and whatever interior flooring you want. Uh, I used acacia wood for this floor, uh, and I just used dirt on the outside of this. In my example piece up here... I textured the floor a little bit with some coarse dirt. You can put in some uh, dirt paths, uh, some stone bricks, random slabs like that, however you want. But for now, let's just focus on getting the basics in. So dirt on the outside, wood on the inside. And right here, all we did with this part here was, whoops, take a bale of hay and place it facing down. You don't want to place it facing the wall, otherwise you get that twine on the top, and I don't think that looks as good. So place that down, and then add a spruce door like so. And if you want the cage effect of the chicken coop, you can crouch and place a oak trap door on the top of that spruce trap door. Close that up, and then if you want a chicken in here, after your roof is on, open one of these up and throw eggs in here until a baby chicken hatches, then close that quickly. When the baby chicken grows up, it won't be able to escape and it'll look pretty cool. The eggs that that chicken lays will not be collected by this system. That is a purely aesthetic choice and one that is totally optional. Now we can go ahead and start with our roof. So what you're going to want to do is head up here and place dark oak slabs in these positions here just on top of the walls that we've built already on all of this lower part here place some slabs and then one two three there over the chicken coop that's going to keep the chickens in if you do choose to keep them there now because we want space to stand in here this is where we're going to step up to the next level just like so that gives us enough space on the inside to walk around it also gives this roof just a nice little tiny curve to it then come over here and place one, two, and then the third one on top of your dark oak fence, and then fill that in going all the way down. And that is our roof done right there. Once your roof is on, you're going to want to head in here and place this little chicken tunnel door thingy. I'm not sure what to call it. Maybe if you have a farm, let me know. If you want to know how to do that specifically, just one trap door there, jump one trap door there, one there, and flip those two up. 
boom, little chicken tunnel. This is actually big enough for them to get through too, and they will walk in and out of this structure once there are chickens in here. From this point, all we need to do now is decorate our build. So add a few dark oak trap doors right here, just to take away the harshness of this corner right there. Uh, and you can add another one right there if you like, but we can really just start going crazy with our decorations on this. If we take a look up here at the example, you can see I placed another dark oak trap door right there above a lantern on that diorite wall. We have a few tables here with some flower pots, and back here I just made a very simple planter. After that, you just bone meal the grass all around this, add some bushes around, uh, I put some vines here, if you don't want the vines to grow wildly, you might need to put some string in their way. Uh, that might look good from a distance, but if you want vines, just let them grow and then break them when you need to go in and out. And once there are chickens in here, you're actually going to want to just stay out of this thing forever because chickens are pretty sneaky and they will get out if they can. Uh, place a few lanterns in these spots right here to keep mobs out, one right there, anywhere that you feel like. Really just have fun with the decorating. Make things rough. Make them imperfect. That's what makes a rustic build look good. The last thing we need to do is make sure that we can access our eggs. So if you built it underground, head on over here, skip one block, and then dig a hole, and that should give you access to your chest right here. Uh, I put glass here to stop chickens from coming in and out during this uh, demonstration, but it's totally up to you how you want this little area to look. Uh, if you put glass over top of your chest, you can still access the chest. A little ladder will get you out, and then a trap door on top of it. Barely noticeable. You can even cover this up with some leaves if you don't like the look of the trap door just hanging out. So there you have it, a pretty impractical, fully automatic egg collection system. Drop as many chickens as you want in here. That hopper minecart underneath will work day and night. If this is placed around your base and your chunks are loaded all the time, that means that this will be running in the background, and pretty soon you'll have more eggs to deal with than you'll know what to do. Uh, my name is Fiasco. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned something, and please do send me a screenshot if you end up building this. I would love to see how it turned out for you. If you have any suggestions for another farm that I can make, please let me know what you want to see made pretty and practical. Until next time, I'm Fiasco. Thank you very much. Goodbye.